We're back now at 809 for Oscar winner and new mom Sandra Bullock. This has been the best of times and the worst of times this year, but now she has a new sense of purpose, a school in New Orleans. A school that has close to 100% graduation rate, a school that has its very own health clinic. Oh my God, I'm talking like a politician. No offense, but I need to be doing this. No pointing, only thumbs. I know, I've learned that. That is Sandra Bullock speaking at the Warren Easton Charter School, which suffered more than $4 million in damages during Hurricane Katrina. Thanks to the generosity of Sandra and other people, that school and its students are now thriving. And that's where I met up with her and school board member Arthur Hardy. I started by asking Arthur how Sandra and the school got connected. She found us, and, and uh, I'm sure did her due diligence, but called me on a Sunday afternoon. This she called you personally? Yeah, this is Sandra Bullock. I, I like to cold call yeah. people. Just, <laughs> people and I think are upstanding community. But what, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. What's but, happening? You know, <laughs> I'm in the Mardi Gras business, and I deal with crazy people every day. So when she said, uh, this is Sandra Bullock, I said, yeah, I'm Clark Gable. I was about to hang up. You know, who knows? But she, no, it really is, and it really was. <laughs> and, and, cool. and tell me how the conversation went. She knew what we were all about, and I think I uh, had done enough work to, to know we were the real deal. And then once she came and met the kids, it was all over. I didn't have to sell anybody. You know? Money is yeah. one thing, though, and, and something that Arthur has said in an interview in the past. He was saying, okay, it's one thing for Sandra Bullock to come in here and give us some of her money or help us raise money. But you said something else about her. You said she also arrived at a time where we needed a cheerleader. Or did we? we and really I was did. a cheerleader. Not a very good one in high school, but I did my best. Well, you're I was speaking well in more the general sense. I know, Matt. <laughs> no, that, that's exactly right. And I believe she thinks, as we do, that, that public school education is the answer to crime, poverty, prejudice. I mean, a good school system. And we want the whole city system to be good, not just us. We want to be the best among many good schools. And I think we are an example that it can be done. It takes a lot of work, but yes, you can do it. One of the things that the floodwaters exposed here in this city was this, I mean, for I don't have a better term, abject poverty. Mm -hmm. And the, and the fear here, I think, in a lot of um, people's minds in New Orleans is that those same people who were most victimized mm -hmm. by that hurricane have been left out of the recovery, mm -hmm. that they aren't the ones who are enjoying the recovery. How do you feel about that? There are a lot of things that fell through the cracks during the storm, and it was embarrassing. Um, those cracks exist throughout the United States, throughout the world, and, and it just sort of opened up something that I don't think people knew about or maybe didn't want to see. But right here under this roof, there are souls and spirits and young people who don't come from any money, but carry this extraordinary spirit to like override that, suck in every ounce of education that the school provides and get out of here and, and create a life for them that is beautiful and fulfilling and filled with all those things that they might not have had. It's always going to be the way that, that people that shouldn't be left behind are left behind, but let the school be an example of how we don't need to leave anyone behind. We've known each other for a pretty long time. I don't admit I, to that. <laughs> I will. I'm really? proud of it. I don't know that I've ever heard the level of passion where did this passion come from for this particular city? I spent so many summers and New Year's and, and, and fun times in New Orleans. It was always a place where I felt like I could go and actually let go and enjoy the spirit of something. Your connection to the city just got deeper officially. You finalized your adoption. I did, I did. And Louis from New Orleans. He's from New Orleans. So He's a little mean, Cajun cookie. You are forever now hitched to this city. I am. How lucky am I? What was it like the fi when you finalized that? Mm -hmm. you, it's a long process. Long, long process. As, as sterile as the room seemed, it felt so rich. It felt like it was time, you know? And, and the process is the way that the process is for very, very good reasons. And I did not circumvent. I wanted to do everything exactly the same way everyone else did. It was nice to have someone say, I think you're a fit parent, which is what I heard which was like <laughs> <laughs> the waterworks began <laughs> but you can't celebrate too long you get at home and change diapers oh, and feed and oh, things yeah, like oh, that, that. kids don't care about celebrations he, he, no he does he does he at likes eight to months old oh he likes to celebrate <laughs> he likes to dance and celebrate he's um he's uh, you know what i got blessed i got lucky and he's extraordinary the nicest thing i read um that you said recently you said um even throughout the whole process i didn't care what he would look like mm -hmm. or whether it would be a he or a she mm -hmm. what Color, Anything what, about yeah. it, no. I just had faith that they were going to put me together with the right child. Mm -hmm. Where'd that faith come from? 
It doesn't uh, always happen know. that way. I don't know. You know, everything works out the way the universe wants it to work out. And and we we always said that that it didn't matter where the child came from. The child that needed us in the home is the child that's going to be placed. Looking forward to your future with Louie. You said recently. I want to feel the sun on our face when we go for a walk, not having to hide anymore, not having my friends and family lie anymore, telling everyone I meet about the most beautiful man I know, including his poop schedule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty regular. How close are you to that day? I'm very, well, the poop schedule is pretty regular, That's which is not good. What I meant. Yeah, well, you brought it up. <laughs> I'd like to share it with America. He has a healthy poop schedule. <laughs> going to hate me because this will be. <laughs> Mom. I'll keep the tape by. Yeah, would you? Thanks so much. I was saying to a girlfriend of mine, no one understands. The shift in priorities about having a, a child in your life that you, ha you are responsible for until you have a child in your life. It naturally shifts. It just shifted the first day I met him, and it was like he'd been there the whole time, yet everything was different. And now, Louis, Louis got the stage. One thing I want to, I want to compliment you on, you managed to do something this, this year that is almost one. impossible. You, mm -hmm. you have, A, kept a secret mm -hmm. concerning your adoption, and you've, you found a way to retain privacy mm -hmm. At a time where it wasn't all that private, mm -mm. it takes friends. It takes good people with integrity. I mean, I, I read something like, "How did someone keep a secret?" And it's human beings exist that have integrity, that know how to keep their mouth shut, that that know the bigger picture, that don't sell out their friends. Those people are all over the place. But again, we don't like to talk about it because it doesn't sell a magazine. But yeah. I, I was blessed with the same friends I've had since before things got really special for me and blessed in life and when things get bad they're still the same friends and everything passes it all passes but they just you know they know if they screw up they're not coming on the next vacation I'm not gonna babysit their kids I will cut them I will take no them down. premiere tickets <laughs> no they don't really want to go to premieres which is kind of nice but you know it's it's I'm I have friends and family that are, are filled with massive amounts of integrity it shouldn't be an oddity. Well, they all learned two words. What? No, no comment. comment. <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking to a local journalist here the other day mm -hmm. as part of the anniversary of Katrina. And at the end of him asking me questions, he said, and uh, do me a favor, be nice to Sandra. <laughs> because she, to us here, is a hero. Mm. Wow. It's, it's true. making me teary. It is true. <laughs> it's true. Now it's random passion. acts of this kindness. This whole city has fallen in love with her. She belongs to us. Don't mess with Sandy. I like that. And no, I'm serious. They, it's like you heard her, you heard us, and you better be ready for a fight. 